Aloha, and welcome to Lava Ocean Tours, your front row seat to feel the heat. Visit SeaLava.com for current lava updates or to book your tour online. Everyone got that one? And I um, feel this, this is much safer than my car ride uh, coming down. Of course, um, we're going to get you back to the dock nice and safe and sound. And um, just like my um, 12 and 13 year old boy was in this vessel every time, um, that's pretty much a guarantee. But we do show you quite an ocean um, Where lava enters the ocean, there can be explosive interactions between the hot molten lava and the cooler seawater. Uh, we refer to these as littoral explosions. And they do uh, occur at, at ocean entries. Uh, some ocean entries, they're, they're more common and more numerous. Or, you know, sometimes uh, in, in, at past ocean entries, we've seen where there's been a, a, a phase where there were more littoral explosions than maybe later on. And it probably has to do with the offshore uh, topography. We, we did see uh, small littoral explosions um, with the 61G lava flow when it entered the Kamakuna, the Kamakuna Ocean Entry uh, between, um, uh, that started in July um, 2016. Uh, what, you know, we didn't see this firsthand what happened this morning, but based on what's going on at the ocean entry there near Ahala Nui, uh, the, the ocean is probably not all that deep in that area, and the, the submarine flow, there is likely a submarine flow uh, that entered the ocean, and there was uh, this explosive interaction uh, where, where the, um, the seawater flashes to steam uh, upon contact with the, the molten lava, the 2,000 degree lava. And when that steam, with the steam explosion, there are fragments of, of molten lava as well as uh, solidified or semi solidified lava fragments that are blasted high into the air. And so when you, when you see the littoral explosions, you can sometimes see the you know the bright red, yellow red incandescent molten material as well as a lot of black. Uh, debris, anything from sand-sized particles uh, to particles larger, um, larger than, say, a, a, a bread box that can be uh, blasted into the air. We have uh, talked about these, uh, the ocean entry hazards, for many years uh, at the Hawaii Volcano Observatory, where we have produced and uh, written several Volcano Watch articles about ocean entry hazards and stating that these hazards um, when there's an explosive interaction between lava and seawater, the hazards can extend uh, hundreds of meters both inland and seaward. And I know that during the, the, the Kamakuna Ocean Entry, the 61G lava flow, uh, that the Coast Guard established a safe zone um, around that ocean entry of 300 meters from, from the ocean entry. Thank you, Janet. If I can just follow up really quickly, I want to make sure I've got this right. So um, is the, is the explosions that we've seen today and that we've seen in the past you know, week or whatever, two weeks, these are coming from, the, say, lava tubes are entering um, underwater, correct? These aren't coming, this isn't occurring from the flows that are um, oozing into the water from the land. It, it can be, generally it can be either. Uh, the lava tube, you know, when, when the, the lava hits the ocean, um, if a tube is carrying it, the, the lava will ooze from the tube into the water. And so what can happen is that as that flow goes into the water, it can crust over. And then if there's uh, you know, some explosive activity that can blast that, that crust is formed on the top of the, the flow up, and that's part of the solidified material that gets hurled, hurled upward. So it can be either, either way. Um, it's unlikely that a lava tube, that's a, a hollow nui, that there's a lava tube that, that has necessarily formed beneath beneath the water. It's more likely this uh -uh flow that was headed into the water uh, and then you have this explosive interaction uh, just from from the 2,000 degree lava causing the seawater to flash the steam and creating a, an explosion. Thanks very much. The next question is from Brenton Ola from KITV. Your line is open. Hey, same topic uh, for Janet here. Janet, how dangerous is this and how far could, uh, I guess, these uh, lava rocks or particles be flung? 
Well, as I, as I stated, based on, um, based on observations through a lot of years, watching ocean injuries uh, through this 35 plus year long um, eruption on Kilauea's East Rift Zone, uh, we, our recommendation has been for a number of years that the, the hazard can exist 300 meters from the ocean entry, and that's both inland and seaward. And we have seen fragments, uh, large, you know, blocks of rock that have been blasted hundreds of meters inland um, in, in, in pa at past ocean entries. And based on that, the assumption is those you know, the same the same can happen seaward as what we've seen on inland. It's just that if you're not uh, if something hits the ocean and, and nothing's in its way, you don't see where where the rocks have, have fallen. And so based on that, that's how it was determined back during the the Kabupuna ocean entry with the 61G flows that the safe zone was delineated as 300 meters around that ocean entry.